Now that the days are getting longer and the sun has been shining, my solar array here at Everstoke has been generating a full on fire hose of power. But I've only got one battery in my off-grid system. It's a pretty good battery, but in the grand scheme of things, it's kind of like a kiddie pool. The solar array is 9.6 kilowatts of power coming in at peak times. This battery is 14 kilowatt hours. So it fills up most days before noon. And most of this full on fire hose is being wasted. So if this battery is a kiddie pool, then my electric truck is like a backyard pool in the suburbs. It's not quite Olympic sized, but it still has a 131 kilowatt hour battery. And that's almost 10 times the size of the kiddie pool battery that we use to run almost everything out here. But now I finally got the electric vehicle charger installed. I can close the loop on this system and no longer let all that solar power go to waste. So because I'm off grid and the battery is a lot smaller than the truck, it's a little more complicated than just plugging. You got peanuts in there? I'm trying to film. Gary the Stellar's Jay. So I need to make sure the battery's almost all the way full because if I plug this in, it will drain it within a few hours. I've actually been able to write a couple automations in Home Assistant. I got all this hooked up to some smart home stuff, which is fantastic. It just checks every hour if the battery is over 80% turn on the truck, start charging. If the battery drains lower than 70%, turn it off, pause it for now. I've got my charger set to output at 5.7 kilowatts, which is the sweet spot for our capacity, for our breakers, for my wire thickness. If you have twice the capacity and twice the wire thickness, you can go all the way up to 11.4 kilowatts with this charger. So that's still kind of a trickle charge, but if I set this thing for six hours and the sun is shining, I'm gonna be able to capture 34 kilowatt hours into my truck. And that is a pretty good day's work because previously I would drive down the road to Portola and use this EV range charger where they charge 60 cents per kilowatt hour. That has to be one of the most expensive energy rates in the United States. 34 kilowatt hours down the street would cost me 20 bucks and at least 90 minutes of my time where I kind of have to sit in the car and wait for it to charge versus six hours out here while I'm doing a bunch of other stuff. Now I can just set it and forget it and it's gonna put 20 bucks worth of power into my truck every day if the sun is shining. And that 34 kilowatt hours of energy would get me 61 miles of driving based on my 1.8 miles per kilowatt hour <laughs> mileage. How crazy is it that we have the technology now that you can gas up your own truck in the middle of nowhere? It is the off-grid dream and I'm living it. And yes, I will continue to say gas up my truck. I'm gonna hit the gas if I wanna go fast. I will roll down my windows. I will dial a number on my phone. I'll also hang up the phone when I'm done with it. So theoretically, if the truck was at 0% and I plugged it in, it would take four days, six hours each day, 24 hours of charging to go from zero to 100%. I know in theory, that seems kind of slow, but for my use in practice, I've done trips to Reno now, the car just sits here most of the day. I'm out working, doing other stuff. I can do my little trips to Portola or Gray Eagle. It's so perfect for my use. I've spent more than a thousand bucks over the past six months on fast charging. I think I'm gonna be able to offset almost all of that. So as you may imagine, all of this equipment is very expensive. I think I'm well over 25,000 bucks for the solar panels, the ground mounts, the wires, the panel, the inverter, the battery, all the miscellaneous stuff. And that's with zero labor cost, me just doing it all myself. But now that I've closed the loop, I'm finally clawing all that back one day at a time. And like I said before, we needed all this power infrastructure anyways to be able to run this off-grid property. Our neighbors next door paid more than $30,000 to get power to their premises, and then they still have a power bill. So we paid a lot of money to get this up and running, and now we don't have a power bill. We're just clawing that, that price back day by day. So now that I've been down this road of off-grid power and I've learned so many lessons, if I had to start over from scratch today, I would do things a lot different. 
I would want a system that was very modular so I could start with the basics and then add more as I went, spending money over time instead of all at once like I've had to do with my system. A dead simple portable power station that you could build up into a mega power monster, that would be pretty cool. That system did not exist four years ago, but today, thanks to the sponsor of this video, Bluetti, it is possible. We have been using Bluetti portable power stations out here for more than four years, and every year these products just keep getting better and better. This one is still up and running, even though we have put it through some of the worst <laughs> situations, torture tested many, many times, but it's still working. It's got 91% charge right now. This is the new Apex 300 from Bluetti. Works great on its own as a portable power station, but it's very modular. You can buy all kinds of add-ons to build into a massive off-grid system. If you've never seen one of these portable power stations before, it's pretty cool. You can plug it in at home to charge it up, and then you can take it wherever you need power. It's got a bunch of outlets on the front, power a chop saw, a PlayStation, charge your e-bike, lots and lots of uses. You can get 3,840 watts of power out of this power station in 120 volt or 240 volt. You just have to flip a switch. It's got almost 2,800 watt hours of energy that you can store in this device. I can charge up my e-bike maybe four times from zero to 100% just off of one charge from this battery. You can run your power tools for quite a long time. You can even do outdoor gaming sessions in the middle of nowhere. With 2,800 watt hours of energy in this portable power station, you could run a Traeger grill for almost 45 hours at 60 watts draw. You could run a blender like a Vitamix at 1,500 watts for two hours. Get your electric blanket on the low setting for 25 hours at 100 watts. Or if you had a small portable air conditioner that only took 600 watts, you could run that thing for four and a half hours. You could charge your phone up 200 times or maybe 200 different people's phones once. Every case is different, but if you figure out the power draw of the item that you like to use, run the math, you can kind of figure it out. I am a portable power station power user at this point, and the first thing that jumped out to me when I unboxed and turned on this Blue Eddy was the screen. Finally, Blue Eddy has nailed it with the screen. Previous versions have not been that great. This one is just perfection. So now that they fixed the screen, my only remaining gripe about the Blue Eddy ecosystem, they don't have a public API. You can't get any of your smart home stuff to react to the Blue Eddy. Like I was saying earlier, when I charge the truck, I have to make sure that the battery is above 80%. And if the battery falls below 70%, don't charge the truck. You can't do that with Blue Eddy yet, but I, it's just a software thing. They can do it. They can make it happen. Please make it happen. The Blue Eddy app that you hook into this unit is fantastic. We have been using it for our AC500 that's been running our trailer for the past six months now. I check it every day just to see what's going on. And the big news with this particular unit is that now you can do 120 volt or 240 volt output at the flip of a switch here, which is pretty cool because before you would need to daisy chain two different units to be able to output 240 volts. Oh yeah, another big gripe that Blue Eddy was actually able to fix with the Apex 300 is this advanced settings option called System Switch Recovery. Basically, this means if your Blue Eddy gets drained to 0% and turns off, when it gets recharged back up, it will resume whatever settings it had when it died. And this for us out here is so, so important. We have had every power station out here die because we're gone for a couple weeks and it's snowy and it's dark, but then the sun comes out and then the power station gets powered up to 100%, but the AC output remains off. So my cameras out in the woods won't work or the well pump won't work until you actually physically come to the power station and hit the button to turn on the AC output, which is very tough when the Wi-Fi router is hooked up to the AC output, the Starlink. So everything depended on someone coming out and hitting turn back on and then everything was fine. So with this setting, enable system switch recovery, if your power station comes back online, it'll turn the AC output on automatically. 
game changer if you're having a, a game camera out in the middle of the woods somewhere, such a good setting. And if you're trying to turn that setting on and Blue Eddie asks for a pro password, it's 8888888. And like I said before, the big leap forward with the Apex 300 is the modularity. You can string three of these together to get 11 kilowatts of output. And each of these units can add on six extra batteries. So then you're at like 54 kilowatt hours of energy storage, which is fantastic almost half the truck instead of a tenth of the truck like I'm running right now. Another really big step forward with Blue Eddy is this new thing called the Solar X 4K, which now allows you to have 4,000 watts of solar input into your portable power station. Previously, all portable power stations have been very limited to solar input because you're not gonna take this thing around with 24 solar panels. But since Blue Eddy has been building towards a more modular home backup system and portable power system all in one, they want you to be able to purchase the add-on for the Solar X 4K. That will get you 4,000 more watts of solar input. You get two of these units, you get two of those Solar X 4Ks. All of a sudden, you've got a really, really robust, awesome system. And I've got the extra B300K battery right here, which basically doubles the capacity of this unit. As someone who's built up a big solar power system from scratch, it's hard to overstate how easy the Blue Eddy stuff is. Plug and play all the way through, just so dead simple, it just works. I struggled so much just getting my other system set up. It, it, it was torturous. If you're using this for camping, a party, a mountain bike race, it is dead simple. All the plugs are right here, you plug right in, it just works. If you're putting it as a home backup, you're gonna want the electrician to take a look, you're gonna have to need a couple more switches and things, but to be able to start from scratch right here and get going, we could have used this four years ago so much. In almost every situation now that you would have used, a dirty, noisy, smelly gas generator, the Apex 300 will most likely be able to do the job, especially if you add on a couple batteries. We've got 1200 watts of solar that have been powering our AC 500 that's powering our trailer for the past six months now. We use the microwave, we're gonna be in air conditioning season pretty soon. We're powering a refrigerator, our laptops, TV, PlayStation. It is so nice to be off the grid and good to go. All this stuff for me is the off-grid dream, but if you do have the grid, having a power station with a bunch of batteries is actually an amazing arbitrage opportunity. If you can buy power at a way cheaper rate and then use it when it's more expensive, you might be able to drop your electric bill quite a lot. It just depends on how much they sell you the power in off-peak times and how much power you can use during on-peak times. There's a lot of places where you can buy power very cheap overnight, say four cents a kilowatt hour, and then during the day, it's 20 cents a kilowatt hour. So if you can match your usage, get enough batteries, you could take your electric bill, theoretically, from 200 bucks a month down to 40 bucks a month. So the plan for my Apex 300 out here in the middle of nowhere is to hook up a couple solar panels, charge the battery, and then run another command center, a second beta test version. I had one up on Soulshine Point for a little while, had to work out a few more kinks. I think with the Apex 300, I'll be able to have a much more consistent camera feed, sensors, all this other stuff I wanna do. The first piece of the puzzle is this big old deck box that I'm gonna be able to fit everything inside of. Whoa. Whoa. Perfect spot. One B300K battery. One Apex 300. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Look at that, still got a ton of room for activities. 
and all this stuff. <laughs> got my 5G to Wi-Fi modem. I've got the old 5G antenna to boost the signal a little bit. I've got my Flight Radar 24 Raspberry Pi that is actually sensing any airplanes in the vicinity. And now I'm gonna hang up this camera so I can get some good shots of the mountains and the trails somewhere. The biggest problem I had with my previous outpost setup was my hotspot overheating. If it was a hot day, it would overheat pretty quickly. Now I've got this bigger deck box. I could maybe work on some kind of passive cooling thing. Hope against hope that uh, this will be a shady enough spot later in the day. Right now, very sunny, but this is the morning. So if I'm able to get this camera in the perfect spot, I'll be able to hit Mills Peak, Mount Elwell, Eureka Peak, the Johnsville Ski Bowl, and maybe even a little bit of the Mill Pond. Oh yeah, level as can be. <laughs> okay, I've got the camera installed, watching from my phone. The quality is okay, it's not great. I've got a pretty good zoom where I can look at the mountains, but this shot of the road right here is kind of the perfect shot to see what the conditions are at Everstoke, if I can actually get a screen grab of this once an hour, put it on the Everstoke website, everstoke.bike. That would be a huge win. And it's just the start. Of course, I want to get better cameras and see different things and track the animals, power up Furby. The bug is right over here. I could trench a little line and power that up with a big battery and a big system instead of a little one. Ah, so many options out here. Ah, I got a lot to do. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you on the trail.